So should Donald Trump be prosecuted for racketeering in violation of the New York State RICO laws? Well, the prosecution team that investigated the crimes of Donald Trump said yes, but New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg said not so fast. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. Well friends, I'm sure you've seen the reporting about a book that was written by former prosecutor Mark Pomerantz. He's the guy that was brought in to the New York District Attorney's Office to investigate the crimes of Donald Trump and to indict and prosecute him if the evidence supported a prosecution. And he did that. He investigated Trump. He concluded that the evidence supports a racketeering indictment of Donald Trump. And then the New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg essentially killed that investigation and Pomerantz resigned in protest, as did Pomerantz sort of partner in that criminal prosecution, another prosecutor named Carrie Dunn. And now Pomerantz has written a book about what he went through and what his conclusions were about the crimes of Donald Trump and then the dispute he had with Alvin Bragg over whether to indict Donald Trump for his crimes or not. I want to start with the, the New York Times reporting about Pomerantz new book and some of the revelations in that book. And then we're going to take a stroll through this story. We're going to talk about the RICO laws, including New York's mini RICO laws. And we're going to try to figure out um, who's got the better of the argument. Mark Pomerantz saying Trump should be indicted and tried for racketeering for running the Trump organization as a corrupt enterprise or Alvin Bragg, who just really wasn't feeling a prosecution against Donald Trump. Maybe you can tell how I'm leaning on this question. But let me start with the New York Times reporting. Here's the headline. Trump likened to mob boss John Gotti in ex-prosecutor's new book. Mark Pomerantz, who resigned from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office last year, wrote that he had pursued a racketeering case against the former president. And that article begins, Donald Trump grew his business, fortune, and fame through a pattern of criminal activity, according to a new book by a veteran prosecutor who reveals that the Manhattan District Attorney's Office once considered charging the former president with racketeering, a law often used against the mafia. The prosecutor, Mark Pomerantz, resigned in protest early last year after the newly elected district attorney, Alvin Bragg, decided not to seek an indictment of Mr. Trump at that time. But for months beforehand, Mr. Pomerantz had mapped out a wide-ranging possible case against the former president under the state racketeering law, according to the book People vs. Donald Trump. That broader approach was based on the theory that Mr. Trump had presided over a corrupt business empire for years, a previously unreported aspect of the long-running inquiry. And then friends, here is the inflammatory part. Here's the part that is probably, you know, put in there to try to get people to buy books. Not a criticism, as long as it is an accurate account of what Mark Pomerantz found as he investigated Donald Trump. Here is the, uh, the sensational claim. He, Donald Trump, demanded absolute loyalty and would go after anyone who crossed him. He seemed always to stay one step ahead of the law. Mr. Pomerantz, a prominent lawyer who has prosecuted and defended organized crime cases, writes of Mr. Trump. In my career as a lawyer, I had encountered only one other person who touched all of these bases, John Gotti, the head of the Gambino organized crime family. And I would hasten to add that Mr. Pomerantz knows whereof he speaks because he was the one who successfully prosecuted John Gotti. The article continues, 
Mr. Pomerantz blames Mr. Bragg for being too slow to get up to speed on the case after he was elected in November 2021. And Mr. Bragg's predecessor, Cy Vance Jr., the former Manhattan District Attorney, concluded that he had enough evidence to make the case, as did another senior prosecutor, Mr. Pomerantz's partner in the Trump criminal investigation, Carrie Dunn. He also believed they had the goods and Donald Trump should be indicted. And Mr. Dunn also resigned in protest when Alvin Bragg refused to take their recommendation, when in essence he killed the investigation. And friends, even though Mark Pomerantz, one of the most experienced organized crime prosecutors around, believed Donald Trump should be indicted, and even though his trial partner, Carrie Dunn, believed Donald Trump should be indicted, and even though the former District Attorney Cy Vance believed Donald Trump should be indicted, here was what Mr. Bragg said. Here's his comeback or his justification for deciding not to indict Donald Trump. Quote, after closely reviewing all the evidence from Mr. Pomerantz's investigation, I came to the same conclusion as several other senior prosecutors involved in the case. Uh, more work was needed. I'm sorry, you know the way that lands with me? Several other people, lots of other people are saying that uh, there wasn't enough evidence. Doesn't that sound like Donald Trump saying, uh, well, you know, lots of other people are saying I did nothing wrong. Everybody's saying it's a witch hunt. You know, I'm not thoroughly persuaded by Mr. Bragg's explanation. All right, friends, let's take a stroll through this story and see where we come out on the question of whether Donald Trump should have been indicted for racketeering or not. First of all, let's start with RICO, right? We've all probably heard the term RICO. What is a RICO case? Well, RICO stands for Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations. It was a law that was uh, put on the books federally in 1970, primarily to go after the mob, the mafia. You know, that mob boss was always sort of famous for insulating himself from criminal liability. The mob boss would rarely give orders, I want this person killed, I want that person taken care of. It was more along the lines of, you know, well, maybe somebody should, um, should pay a visit to so-and-so, or maybe somebody should, should talk to this guy. Um, and, you know, mob bosses were sometimes hard for prosecutors to develop evidence against in order to bring charges against the mob boss who never got his hands dirty himself, typically. And so the RICO laws were designed to hold the whole mafia organization accountable, including the crime boss who didn't perform any of the crimes himself and who didn't expressly direct the crimes himself. But the RICO laws weren't, weren't only applicable to the mob, the mafia. They were applicable to any corrupt organization or enterprise that engaged in a pattern of racketeering activity, a series of crimes, rack acts, we call them, um, that tended to show that this whole organization, this enterprise, a business, a corporation, was being run as a corrupt entity, a corrupt enterprise. So RICO laws don't just apply to the mob, they can apply to any corrupt organization. Think the Trump organization, put a pin in that, we're going to come back to that in a minute. And then after the um, federal legislature passed the RICO laws in 1970, states started to pass what are often referred to as mini RICO laws, state RICO laws, and presently I think 33 states have mini RICO laws on the books including New York, and in New York they call it enterprise corruption. And Mark Pomerantz and his team believe they had the goods. They had enough evidence to pursue Donald Trump for racketeering, for running the Trump organization as a corrupt enterprise. And what recently happened in a courtroom in New York, when the Trump organization was tried for essentially being a corrupt organization, specifically the charge, the lead charge 
against the Trump Organization was a criminal scheme to defraud in the first degree, running the Trump Organization, you know, uh, courtesy of this tax fraud scheme that was ongoing for 15 years. And the prosecutors won a conviction of the Trump Organization for engaging in a 15 year long tax scheme, a criminal scheme to defraud. Not only that, friends, during the prosecutor's closing argument in the Trump Organization case, he argued to the jury, ladies and gentlemen, the evidence that you've seen during the course of this trial against the Trump Organization, not against Donald Trump personally, but the evidence you've seen shows, proves that Donald Trump explicitly approved tax fraud. So if that's the position of the prosecutors, if they argued to the jury that the evidence proves Donald Trump explicitly approved the tax fraud and Trump's organization, his namesake, was convicted of a 15 year long tax fraud scheme, how is it and why is it that Donald Trump wasn't indicted and made part of that prosecution. Seems to me, based on the available evidence, the better argument goes to Mark Pomerantz and Carrie Dunn and Cy Vance that Donald Trump should have been prosecuted. And Alvin Bragg decided not to for whatever reason. Let me hasten to add that Mark Pomerantz in his book does not accuse Alvin Bragg of being compromised or corrupt or making these decisions in bad faith. It just looks like he was unduly timid, you know, not willing to go forward on a challenging prosecution against a former president of the United States. And that is a damn shame because it does look like Pomerantz was right. They had the goods to indict and convict Donald Trump. Here is perhaps the most troubling thing I've heard Mark Pomerantz say, and I heard him say it recently in his I think first live interview, which was with Rachel Maddow. He said, you know, one of the problems was there was so much crime by Donald Trump. I mean, Trump was, you know, just grossly inflating his, the, the value of his assets to try to defraud banks and insurance companies and grossly deflating the value often of those same assets to commit tax fraud. And, you know, he was involved in the hush money pay off to Stormy Daniels, trying to keep her mouth shut, trying to bury deeply damaging information from the American voters in advance of the 2016 election. And Mark Pomerantz talks about all of these different crimes. And, uh, you know, the Trump University, the Trump charities, I think both of which have been shut down for corruption. And he said There's, there was so much crime that was being uncovered during the Trump investigation that Mark Pomerantz said one of the problems, one of the reasons, in his opinion, Alvin Bragg decided not to charge Donald Trump is there was so much crime that it became a resource problem. They didn't have enough resources to prosecute, to get their prosecutorial arms around all of Donald Trump's crime. I'm sorry, first of all, nobody said governing or prosecuting was going to be easy, but I don't buy an argument that somebody is too big a criminal to take on. That is not persuasive. All the more important, you take it on. You know, and if Alvin Bragg can't take it on, you know where they have a, a lot of resources to attack, you know, large scale criminal conspiracies, RICO conspiracies, the federal government, as long as there are federal crimes committed, which again militates in favor of the feds, the Department of Justice, charging Donald Trump for his crimes that violate federal law. But boy, it was disturbing to me to hear Mark Pomerantz say one of the problems was the New York District Attorney's Office didn't have enough resources to get its arms around all of Donald Trump's crimes. Let me leave you with this, friends. I could go on talking about this for hours. But I want to leave you with this. At the very end of the New York Times reporting about this new book that Mark Pomerantz has published, talking about his experience investigating the crimes of Donald Trump, 
He said that, you know, Alvin Bragg is now looking at, reportedly, the hush money payments, which is, you know, one little sliver of the crimes of Donald Trump, the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels that were run through um, Donald Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen paid the $130,000 out of his own pocket, reportedly, and then Trump wrote him a series of reimbursement checks. And you know what Donald Trump did? He said, oh, those are, that, that's part of a retainer agreement I have with Michael Cohen. Those are legal fees. No, it's not. No, they weren't. They were to pay off Stormy Daniels to keep her mouth shut so the American voters didn't know what Donald Trump did. And then he took them as business expenses on his federal taxes, which makes this all, you know, one great big federal tax crime. IRS, if you're listening, DOJ, if you care. Those are federal crimes, not just New York state crimes. But now the reporting is Alvin Bragg is looking into that one little sliver of Donald Trump's criminal activity, and maybe he'll bring a case, a prosecution, based on that one little sliver of Trump's criminal activity. And here is what Mark Pomerantz said about that. He said, if Alvin Bragg chooses to go only after the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels and none of the other crimes, quote, it will be a very peculiar and unsatisfying end to this whole saga, close quote. And I could not agree with Mark Pomerantz more. All of Donald Trump's crimes should be indicted, should be prosecuted, win, lose, or draw. You know why? You know why? Because justice matters. Friends, thank you for bearing with me through that long, meandering stroll through the New York State crimes of Donald Trump. As always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.